Hello, beautiful creatives. So today is um, what Thursday. Today's Thursday. So the video that I have made for you that's going to post Saturday hasn't even been seen by you guys yet. But it's a vlog style, like a uh, day in the life style video where I show you all these bits of things that I did over the week. And I really enjoyed making that video. I felt like it was much more dynamic than a video where I just sit down and do one project, which I get kind of bored with those videos after a while. So I thought that maybe I would do the same thing for next week's video, only I won't know what the feedback is on that video until after Saturday. So anyways, I thought I would start today. Um, I'm just getting set up on my standing table because I'm about to take a Peggy Kroll Roberts, another Peggy Kroll Roberts uh, class. She's been offering these classes for like $40 each. Um, and they're like a three hour class that it's really reasonable. So last, the last one I showed you was her collage where we cut out all those little pieces. I have a couple taped to the wall. Maybe I'll flip the camera around and sh sh remind you of what those were, but this one's, um, intuitive abstracts. So I thought, oh gosh, I love abstracts. I haven't done a lot of abstract painting in years. I used to be deeply, um, engrossed in abstract painting especially intuitive abstract painting. Um, so I'm kind of excited about the class. So I thought I would show you my setup. The class is gonna start in like 15 minutes. So, um, but I thought I would just show you a little bit of my setup and then I'll show you what I did after the class. Okay, so if you liked last week's video, I think you'll like this week's video. So these were a couple of the pieces that I did from her last class that I took on abstract collage, I mean on uh, expressive collage, I actually forgot what she titled the class, but it was fun, it was a lot of fun. Um, I'll try to put a link to the video where I talked about that there. As we made all these different abstract shapes and then we cut them out and just pulled them together into a picture. So today, I'm trying not to spin you fast so I won't make you dizzy. Today, she recommended that we have a color wheel. This was the paper that she recommended, the Strathmore 400 series drawing paper. Um, it's 18 by 24 inches. And then some acrylic paints and some tools, brushes, of course. And then she recommended some pastels. So I have my Lyra crayons, whole bunch of pastels. She said we should get out magazines. The only, I cleaned out all my magazines uh, not that long ago when I cleaned out my studio. So I only had some um, National Geographic's left. And then I just pulled my trolleys over because I've got Posca pens, Liquitex pens, colored pencils, inks, all kinds of stuff in there that I can use. So yeah, it should be fun. But uh, I gotta drink some more iced coffee to wake myself up and then I will check in with you guys at the end and tell you how it went. Some hardcore figure and vocabulary. And, um, but I have some more things like this that I do in my studio. You can see all over that I, I don't know. I have really fun sharing with you guys. So, okay. See you next time, and I'll see you on Facebook. Thanks, everyone. Good. Wow, okay, so two and a half hours later, it's actually over two and a half hours um, of her abstract class, and she keeps you moving. Oh my gosh. She goes at a very fast pace um, so that you can't get too hung up on anything. These are some of the pieces that we created and I actually did have a little trouble keeping up. She shares so much information for the $40 that she charges for her classes, but that I didn't actually even finish because the next step is to take mats or, you know, like two L's, L-shaped mats, and then to sort of, um, it's gonna be hard to do handheld, but then to sort of take your 
L's. I mean, everybody kind of knows about this already, but, and then to make a shape and see what you think you might like to cut out. One of my paintings is still wet and I'm getting black all over, but um, yeah, and then you cut Bristol paper and then you, you glue them to Bristol paper and mat them. So I'm gonna clean up because I have paint everywhere and I gotta clean my brushes, but I hope you guys enjoyed that peek into a Peggy Kroll Roberts um, class because she's going to be giving more of them. And she's like so generous and so energetic. Um, it's a really fun thing to do. So I got to go clean up. Hey, everybody. Today is Friday. We had to take Toshi to the vet this morning. Um, he's got some kind of problem with his eyes and they're not sure what it is. So uh, I came back and I'm really tired today. I feel like that abstract class and going out plein air painting and the stuff that I've been doing lately has worn me out. So I have this Senex gouache that is left on my palette and it's been here for a few days. And so far this stuff has been amazing. It has not molded at all. I have it in my wet palette. I haven't had any mold issues, but still I don't like to leave my wet palette set up for too long. Um, that may look like mold, but it's just paint stains. Anyways, I thought I would use this up because it's been sitting out for a few days and I might want to put some acrylic on here and do some larger um, abstracts on my easel over there because this is another pad that I, it's ancient. This pad is, I've had this forever. I was never very crazy about this paper. Um, what is this paper? I think this is a Strathmore drawing pad. Oh no, Canson. It's a Canson, but it's a, it's sketch paper, you know, so it's not great. I did do that pastel. Where is it? That crazy pastel on it. It worked great for that. So anyways, I thought this would be a good pad to use up because I hate to waste everything. And if you remember my New Year's mission this year was to use up all these sketchbooks and sketch pads that have just been lingering around forever. And I'm having really good success with that. I have filled so many sketchbooks. So these are all full. These are all full. Um, these are all in progress. These are all in progress. So some are almost full and some are not that full and these are in process. So uh, some of these are like expensive watercolor paper. So I do save like the etcher ones and the coval ones for when I do watercolor. And I don't get into watercolor that often. When I get into it, it tends to be a spurt and I do a lot of them, but I do tend to do more gouache um, and mixed media. So anyways, the this pile here is uh, sketchbooks that have not been touched. So I'm making progress. I've filled a lot of sketchbooks, partially filled a lot. So I'm doing good with that goal. Um, and I thought that sketch pad would be good for just pure exploring since it's just a, a spiral bound pad. But today I'm going to, this afternoon, I'm going to see, you know, I have such limited energy. I don't know if it's, I'm just going to do abstracts or what landscapes, I'm not even sure. But um, I got my two books that I'm, you know, working in daily. So these are filling up pretty fast. I mean, this one was just started on the 13th and it has a lot of stuff in it already. And then this one is also filling up pretty good. And this was started when on, oh, this was started in May. So, um, and these two I, I interchange with, let's see, is it this one? Yeah, this one when I'm doing Emma Carlisle uh, Patreons. I kind of keep a few different sketchbooks so that I can, you know, if, if a page is wet or whatever, I can switch over. So that one I've used 
two. So that's why it takes me so long to fill one up because I use multiple. Oh, and this one too. I've been using this one. Um, I didn't think I liked this size, so I put it away and didn't use it for a long time. But then I took it out and did a couple of uh, little plein air paintings in it, and I did like the size. So, yeah, I actually really kind of do like this for plein air. So anyways, I got choices, but I'm probably going to work in these two today. Okay, so anyways, when I'm done, I'll show, and I'm trying to try to stick to only the colors that are out, because like I said, I want to empty the gouache off of here, and I want to switch to acrylic to work over on the easel with. So we'll see what happens. Okay, this is the first one. This is what my palette looks like now. So I'm getting the colors used up. Um, I don't usually tape off my sketchbook pages. It's something that I used to do a long time ago, but um, then I just stopped doing it. I guess I stopped doing it when I stopped doing precious, you know, realism-based um, sketchbook pages, but I knew I wanted to paint this really fast and loose, so I was afraid I would go over onto my other pages, because I did, uh, I think it's in last week's video, I showed you that I did actually ruin a prior painting because even though I had paper between the pages, the um, paints bled through and stuck. So that's where I am now with this. And I'm trying to decide if I want to go back in with some of my Lyra, Lyra. I got to figure out how, the right way to pronounce this, but I got to, oh, my tin fell apart. I got to go back in and figure out if I want to put, um, put some crayon marks, some gestural marks in there. I thought I did, but now that I'm looking at it, I'm actually really liking it as it is. So I think I'm going to wait. I don't think, but this was done really fast. You know, not really thinking about anything um, except maybe atmospheric perspective. Like I want, I knew I wanted the things that were in the background to be lighter, cooler shades, and the things that were in the front ground warmer, but just super fast. And um, I like it. I like it a lot. So I'm going to let this dry and then maybe I will have enough energy to do another one or two. Okay, so that one was about 13 minutes. And I did decide to film that one. So there, another, another one really quick. This one was very loosely based. I was actually gonna do a master copy of this Mary Fedden um, painting. And then I just had so many greens and reds on my um, palette that I I decided to go my own way with it. So that is painting number two. I did record this second one. It was about 13 minutes and I will put the full length painting demo on um, my Patreon. I did have a couple of uh, my patrons ask me to do some slow ones as in, instead of doing all sped up ones. So this one, since it's only 13 minutes long, um, I will put the whole slow painting process on real time, I guess I should say, on Patreon. Okay, so that is the second one. And that is the first one. And this one I did not record while I was painting. Just needed some time to myself for for that one. But I'm happy with both of them, real happy. Fast and loose. Palette cleanup paintings, not thinking about much of anything. Just using up the paint that's on my palette. 
I don't remember what I was painting that I had a big clump of black on my palette, but I'm going to just do some abstract, a couple of abstracts with that black. And um, it's I may just do line work and then come back to it, or I may actually develop it into something I don't know, but I want to use up some of that black. So we'll see what happens. Just gonna sort of approach it intuitively. Okay, so that one was three minutes. I have way more black than I'm actually going to use. Just sort of letting my brush walk along the page. I'm kind of liking that bright, dry brush effect, but it's not using up much paint. Oops, oh, I accidentally dipped into the brown. Well. That's okay. I actually kind of like that the brown mixed in with the black there towards the end. Okay, so that one was just like a minute or two. And I think I'll just let these two dry and then Maybe later on I will go back and do something with these, make more marks or add another medium to them. We'll see what happens. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it like that and let it dry. Just a couple of real quickies, real quickie abstracts. Okay, quick palette cleanup page. Just a minute or two for that. My palette is getting, getting down there. I guess I could mix, mix these two greens together. Not a lot of that left. I actually could mix some of this yellow ochre into that green. It makes a nice green. And then the red and the orange. A little bit of orange left. I could mix those two together. There's not a lot of either of those left. I actually could mix some of that red into the green could actually mix some of that yellow ochre with that red too to get an orange, be a muted orange. And the blues, there's a lot of blue. I should, maybe I should do some cloudscapes with that blue, that's a thought. Okay, so I'm getting there. I just have this left. I may try to do one more painting and then whatever's left, just slap on that big, bigger paper that I have on my easel. Mm -hmm. Next one. There is one with the palette knife, which came out really interesting. Really like that. Wait and see how it looks when it dries. Got some nice textures doing a uh, scraffito back into that. 
Okay, so that was a super fun way to spend a rainy afternoon when I was tired. Um, a really relaxing way to paint. And I used up a lot. I mean, you guys saw my palette when I began. There is almost no paint left on this at all, except for the blues. So I may end up doing some skyscapes, add some white and do some skyscapes tomorrow. Um, yeah, that's, that's, I'm pleased with that. I didn't know if I would get that much used up. This is my Masterson Stay Wet palette, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Love these Stay Wet palettes. Um, this actually, the paper and the sponge was a gift last year sometime from Millie, Mildred. And this is what I got done. Let's see, this one's still wet, but this is the palette knife one, which was way fun. Love all that texture. Don't know if it shows up that well on here, but it has a lot of texture. I'm really pleased with this. I wasn't sure how it was gonna come out. I just started grabbing colors. And um, I remember when I grabbed this orange, I thought, ooh, that's gonna be too bright, but it, it worked out great. It reads so beautifully up against the purple and the green. Really pleased with that. I did, I don't wanna close that all the way. This abstract one, which I'm sure I will revisit later and make some more marks on. Um, Oh yeah, this one, another landscape, super happy with that. Kind of inspired by, it started out being inspired by a Mary Fedden, but went way, way off. It doesn't even resemble that at all anymore. So let's see, so that's one, two, three paintings in that sketchbook. And then four, because there's this abstract that I did. And this one, this was just scraping the palette night to get some colors off. And then I went back in with the round brush with the black and just sort of outlined shapes that I saw. That's a really fun thing to do. Just scrape on and then outline. Very relaxing. And this is number five, which was actually number one. I'm doing this so backwards, but love this. This just is so reminiscent of those deep forest summer greens where they sort of fade into the background and everything is green in the woods in the summer. And a lot of times you look at it and you're like, how can I paint that and have it read like something? And I think that's a, that's a pretty nice example of, of looking into the woods. Um, so what did I say that was five and then six? Just another abstract with a black. I actually like this one. I may not do anything more, although I'm kind of thinking a red circle. Ah, oh, that might be something I want to do. A red circle. Hmm, I'll leave it and think about it. Six paintings in a super short period of time. A lot of fun to do. And basically just cleaning up paint off my palette that would have otherwise been thrown away and wasted. So, um, and there's no pressure. They're inexpensive sketchbooks. This one is only $7, super cheap. And it doesn't handle wet media very well, but it does handle gouache really well, especially dry gouache. So um, that was a really productive afternoon. And you know what, even if it hadn't been, it wouldn't have mattered because it was really relaxing and I really enjoyed enjoyed it. Okay, so I will put, for the ones that I filmed, I didn't film them all, but for the ones that I did film, I will put them on um, my Patreon or they will already be on my Patreon by the time this video comes up. I do like the taped edge. I had forgotten how much I liked that look. So I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you soon. So I almost forgot. I know that a lot of times you guys ask what I'm using and for this kind of painting, it doesn't matter. It's just whatever you have on your palette. It could be um, acrylic, it could be anything. So, um, but the sketchbook is Royal Talons. All of this stuff is in my favorite um, items list on my 
There's an Amazon link for favorite art supplies under every video. This is a craft twone, I think it's called, sketchbook. And this is also in my favorite items list. This one was another art creations. Last week when I posted my video, um, this was on sale for $8.99 for the yellow only. So when you go to buy these, be sure to check the colors because some colors are cheaper than others. And as a matter of fact, for those of you that don't click the more link under my videos and um, read the description, I post anything that I find that's on sale. So when I'm posting, when I'm making affiliate links for the items that I have in my video, be sure to click the more button and read below because when things are having a, sometimes I have coupon codes, like there will always be a coupon code for an art toolkit under my video and there's an affiliate link you click to get 5% off. Um, yeah, and like I said, under last week's video and if it's still on sale when I post this video, um, I'll put, I'll put again, I put it usually put with red, um, exclamation points next to it sale. And then I put the affiliate link and there was something else that was on sale last week, but the gouache that I used, I probably mentioned, but it's my Senex gouache. I absolutely love this stuff. I talk to you guys about this stuff all the time. I am not sponsored by Senex, but they did give me these paints a long time ago. I think I've made enough videos on these to let you guys know how much I actually love Senex gouache. I even use it in my Transcend palette. And um, the brushes I used, again, it doesn't matter what brushes you use, any brushes, because these are just palette cleanup paintings. But this one is a Princeton Aqua Elite number four round. So that is that one. And that was the one I did. The only one I used that on was this one to do these sort of vague figurative and these sort of rocks and the, the gulls. I don't think I used that on any of the other paintings. The other one is the Black Gold by Dynasty number 10 flat that I used. And then just two random palette knives. These are so old, they don't even have writing on them anymore for me to tell you what they are. But those are the two sizes that I used. Yeah, those are the ones that I used. And my Masterson Stay Wet palette, and that's it. I think that's all I used. I didn't even add any other mediums to this. I know I've told you guys that I have felt really inspired to just sort of explore and create especially with art supplies that I haven't used that much. Um, so I got out my sketchbook and for some reason, quite a ways back in my sketchbook, um, like way back here, I skipped a page, two pages. It was That was from an Emma Carlisle Patreon session, or it might've been a Sarah Dyer. Nope, that was Emma's. And this was from one of her Patreon sessions. So I don't know why I skipped a couple of pages in between, but I got out supplies that I haven't used. I've been really inspired by the um, Queen's Anne's Lace, the Queen Anne's Lace and um, Goldenrod all over the place lately. So this was so much fun. I got out my um, Gansai Tambi watercolors from Kiritaki. And I, I just never made friends with this. I know a lot of people love them. I'm not taking that away from you. I just personally didn't make friends with it. And I took out these fine line applicators. I used to use these a lot when I was doing paintings on silk and silk scarves. I used to use this for the Gouda, the Resist. Uh, so I had white paint in these. And one is the extra fine tip, which with arthritis, you know, like forget about it. It's so hard to squeeze out. And this one is the standard tip. Also hard to squeeze out with arthritis, but it's possible. So I squeezed out my Queen's Anne's lace and I don't know if it's gonna show, but it has the greatest texture because the paint is just sort of squeezed out. So then I was thinking about the goldenrod. So then I took these three inks, a uh, yellow oxide, um, yellow medium azo, and what's this one? 
transparent burnt sienna. So those are all Liquitex acrylic inks. So I took those and sort of really loosely with just the tips, I didn't even use a brush. I just used the squirters rendered, you know, some really wild goldenrod. Oh, actually before I did that, I took the uh, Gansai Tambi watercolors and sort of painted the background really loose with this Escoda brush. It's the Escoda Versatile, and I just love this brush. So I really loosely rendered the background with that and um, then went over it with the white liner and then went over it with the acrylic ink for the um, goldenrod. So much fun. I mean, I you know, for exploring and just being, you know, bold creating without a care of how it comes out, I highly recommend bringing out the art supplies that you have not made friends with in the past because to me I don't care that much about them I don't care I don't have the hang up about wasting them like I would say if it was golden acrylics or something really expensive or Sennelier pastels this is just pure fun and it's and it shows I think in the end results of just how loose and expressive it is so that was really fun and then what I didn't show you the other day was after I did those sketchbook paintings, I came in the studio right before I was going to bed. My bedroom is across the hall and it's always a mistake to come in the studio before bed. But what I did was I took um, a red colored pencil and went back into this abstract and just did some mark making with the red colored pencil. And I really am pleased with it. I'm glad I did. I think it just really spiced it up and um, I love the look of it. So that was some more exploring that I did. A lot of fun. Just been having so much fun in my sketchbooks lately with just being bold and brave and just throwing stuff at it and seeing what comes up. So that's what I was up to today. Goldenrod and Queen Anne's Lace. Okay, beautiful creatives, I hope that you enjoyed this week's video. I did end up going on to do some skyscapes. Um, some with my palette knife. This was with my palette knife. And this was with my palette knife. And the others were with a brush. Really had fun doing these. You know, more of my effort to use up that blue on my palette. These um, paintings will be up on Patreon um, probably sometime next week, I will post the demos of me doing these paintings on Patreon. I really hope you enjoyed this week's video. And if you did, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that my videos get out to a wider audience. And if you are still watching, the secret word for the week is palette knife. So write palette knife in the comments so that I will know that you made it to the end and that you are one of my most loyal viewers. All right, guys, thanks. I hope you have a great week. I hope you're able to get some creative time in this week and some self-care. I will see you next week. God bless. Take care.